All right, so we're going to use Stellarium to locate solstices and equinoxes uh, in history. And we're going to focus on uh, the time of Gebekli Tepe, the time of the Younger Dryas impact, so that's 10,950 BC. So I'm going to assume that you've got Stellarium downloaded and installed and opened up just like this. Uh, you might have a slightly later version of Stellarium. Uh, the menu systems are slightly different to the one I'm using, but it's uh, the function is very much the same. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to find the menus, which are on the left here, and open up, uh, or make sure that the equator of date is visible. It's very important. Equator of date. And if we zoom out, we can see that there is the equator of date. It's a projection of the equatorial line into space. Uh, and now we're going to open up the, uh, the time and date window. We're going to switch on constellations and their names. And we're going to turn off the atmosphere so that we can see the sun at the same time as the stars. And let's get the sun up in the sky. So we're going to be we're going to have the sun uh, virtually due south. All right. Now let's set the time. Now we're already at San Liurfa. If you wanted to change the location, you could go to the location window, type in a new location, uh, and uh, that will take you there. So for Gebekli Tepe, uh, well, for the Younger Dryas impact, according to what's written at Gebekli Tepe, it's about 10,950 BC. Okay. There we go. So let's find the spring equinox first. So we just increase the month counter until the sun is right on the equatorial line. Okay, we're a little bit below there, so one more day. Okay, that's the date of the spring equinox, and as you can see we are in the constellation of Virgo just about still. So that's spring. To find autumn, we need to go forward or backwards six months do pretty much the same thing. Get the sun onto the equatorial line. Okay, there we are. Zoom in. It's pretty close. Maybe that's better. Okay. So you can see now, for the uh, autumn equinox, we are in the constellation of Pisces. So that's the, uh, the figure at the top left of the uh, pillar 43 at Gebekli Tepe. Um, so now let's find the summer solstice. So we'll go forward, no, we'll go backwards three months from the autumn equinox and that gets us more or less to the summer solstice. But to get the summer solstice exactly we need to click on the sun and now we need to focus on this number here, which is the altitude. Okay, this is these two numbers here are the azimuth and the altitude. We're particularly interested in the altitude, which at the moment is 78 degrees and 19 minutes. So let's um, now we want to make for the summer solstice. We want to make sure that the sun is at the highest point during the year. So we're going to change the time until the altitude is highest. It's still going up. It's going down now, so let's go back a bit. Alright, so that is the time of the day when the sun is directly south. And now let's change the date until the sun is highest. Okay, so it's there. So you can see here that the sun is now in Sagittarius, which is exactly how it's presented uh, on Pillar 43 at Gebekli Okay, so that would be the, the lower horizontal wing for uh, the, the vulture or eagle. All right. Now the winter solstice is a little bit trickier, so let's uh, rewind six months, and we'll get approximately to the winter solstice. Now let's. Now we want to make sure that the sun is at the highest point during the day again. So we need to move the time forward a little bit, or back, until the sun is at the highest point in the day. 
But now we want the day in the year when the sun is at its lowest. So that's going to be about there. Okay, so that's now the winter solstice. And if you zoom in, you can see that uh, we're just coming out of Gemini. And we're starting to get it towards um, Taurus over here. But we're still just about in Gemini. So that's the middle handbag at the top of Pillar 43. Okay, so there you have it. All four solstices and equinoxes that are shown on Pillar 43. If you enjoyed that, um, you might also enjoy my book, Prehistory Decoded, uh, and also take a look at my blog online, martinsweatman.blogspot.com.